Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Alright, today in the Power Supply Design Series, we're going to go over how much power can you get out of your out of your power supply. Alright, uh, kind of reverse engineering, I guess. And you could go into it knowing what you have, but what if you have a transformer, what if you have a cap bank, and you're wondering, hey, how much power can I get out of this thing? And also, there's some uh, efficiency issues, right? You're going to lose some... Uh, power across the copper losses, the current going through the copper through things, and we'll look at that as well. Now, I know this transformer, I've, I've pulled 300 watts out of it, and you know, 360 VA, so it's capable of a lot more. It may warm up, maybe that's not good for long time usage, but it has that capability for short time use. Now, with the big old capacitor bank, you're going to get less ripple, okay? So, you can, that's one way to optimize the power out of a transformer is not to allow very much ripple. Another thing is you can regulate the voltage on the output. That's another thing a lot of audio people don't like to regulate, but you know, eventually we'll get to the regulation aspect. But for now, we're going to see what putting a big old capacitor bank does. In the last video we saw where uh, we had smaller capacitors and we doubled them and we showed the equation for calculating uh, the value of the capacitor. We're going to see with a big cap bank and a transformer what we can get out of the power. Hey, let's jump into this and let's do it. Alright guys, so I thought what we'd do is start off with the data sheet for the Shockey diode. The rec fires on the circuit board and then I'll show you the board and the test setup. So let's the diodes here we're going to see on the heat sink, there's two diodes in a package and the cathodes are tied together. Now these are shock key diodes, so they have a lower uh, forward voltage drop than a normal diode. They're 150 volt rated, which is great for our secondary side after the transformer. That gives us plenty of voltage derating. The voltage for typical is 0.69. That's really great for a rectifier that can handle a lot of current like this. Now each diode can handle 15 amps and the package that is on the heat sink is this TO247. That's a large, physically large package. Okay, so they're rated at 30 amps for RMS current. Now here's the different packages and this is one we look at as a TO247. So it can handle 15 amps of a temperature up to 155 C. That's pretty hot. Surge current, 10 millisecond sinusoidal, so that's basically a half sine wave can go up to 220 amps surge current. So that, that takes care of the surge current, although we have a thermistor to limit that, so we're not going to punish it that way. Now this is an important thing here, the temperature degree C per watt. So the TO247 is large, so see it has the smallest temperature rise per uh, degree C per watt. So 10 watts would make that thing rise 15 degrees. And again, the 0.69 is the typical 0.75 to 0.92, you know, with these temperatures and so on. So the forward voltage drop is very low. These are curves. This one here is for pulse current, for temperature rating, how fast the temperature gets to the pack during the pulse. That's what this one has to do. We're not too concerned with that because these are our large diodes and we should be okay. Now this is forward current here and temperature here and saying how much current you can you can uh, take out. So if you go up to 100C you can still get out 7 amps. Now this curve is average forward current versus the voltage drop. It shows how the curve goes up. As the current goes up you get a little bit more voltage drop. So you can see around 10 amps it's it's still below 0.7. That's really great. All right, now this is the package. Now D and E, see, take take note of those. Let's go over. You can see the metal slug to get the heat out into the heat sink. So let's look at the physical size of that thing. So you can see D is 19 to 20 millimeters, or basically three quarters of an inch, 0.8 inches, and E is 15 millimeters or about 0.6 so it's a decent sized package it's pretty large which is great okay so I just want to show you a data sheet for this part 
let's go on and look at the uh, circuit board and then the test setup and then let's look at test results all right okay let's do it all right this is the top view of the capacitor bank it's one side view see 10,000 microfarad cap now you can see these resistors these are bleeder resistors they're in parallel with this bank these four are in parallel with each other so we got 40 microfarads with two 10 k watt resistors they look about two or three watts to me and then this is the other side 40,000 microfarad two more 10 k resistors in parallel so it's about five k ohms so that's the output you see the two terminals here for plus two terminals here for minus and two ground pins that's what they look like and you can see the little poly capacitors these are these are 0.1 microfarad capacitors little poly 0.1 microfarads on the output near the connector pins that's nice touch so you can see the minus signs on this side so this is the negative rail and it's negative here on the connector and so this would be the positive side and this is a positive rail and then these pins are just tied together for the ground so this is the AC input side so that's the AC input side you can see the resistors these are 4.7 k ohm resistors in series with an LED so that's for this side and then another 4.7 k ohm resistor in series with this LED Okay, so you can see the Schottky diodes here, the ST micro diodes. Now, there's a common cathode in the middle and an anode anode on the, each side. So they're on these nice size heat sinks. On the opposite side of the heat sink here, there's another set of diodes. So the heat sink is well used. So nice construction, nice beefy diodes. And here's the transformer the two primaries and the two secondaries the primaries for 120 volt system here in the US will be tied in parallel so have the blue and the violet tied together and you see the dots dots that will be tied together and the gray and brown the non dot side will be tied together see the model number the transformer and you see it's a 250 VA 50 or 60 Hertz so you'd put these in series if you're 250 volt or 240 volt and so we'll have the black tied to the one AC input and yellow tied to the other AC input and red and orange tied to the ground input and there's the wires coming off there okay okay I'll go ahead and connect those up okay so black red orange and yellow and the black and yellow are in AC black and yellow and red and orange are tied together in the center for ground all right and coming from the power supply I have the the AC power inputs this black and red wire and the black comes into the switch and then through the fuse and through this terminal block tying the one side of the primary side together the other side's tied together right here. So the primary windings right here comes back out the other side. And then I put the thermistor on that side through the terminal block and back to the power cord. This goes back to the power cord. Okay, and then the power cord's coming into the power quality meter here. And I'll take power quality readings off of this. That's the power coming into the power quality meter coming out here in the cord I made. So I'll just kind of adjust this so it's somewhat neat and let's tie up the output. All right, so now to connect up the load, I'll put this electronic load here and the green is the return side of the load. It'll tie to the negative rail and the yellow is positive. It'll tie to the positive rail and then this is our ground um, or return side. It's just the uh, power we will take off the entire um, output from plus to minus. All right, so for the output, I'll tie an active load across the output terminals and we'll go from plus to minus. 
and we'll leave the ground um, just as a reference point for measuring uh, for our measurements but we'll take power all the way from across both rails okay where if I had two loads I could put one here and one here basically they're in series with the ground or center point but in this case I'll just take the load from the output all right so we're going to take the hand tech meter and I'm going to put a voltmeter here and a voltmeter here so we can monitor the voltage on each capacitor to see how evenly the voltage is divided and we'll put the hand tech meter over here and let me do that and I'll just come back all right this is the hand tech I've got it on the one millivolt per 10 milliamp scale and I'll zero it before we take measurements I've got one voltmeter here tied to this rail plus to minus and I've got another voltmeter tied to this rail uh, plus to minus so that voltmeter will read negative and that'll be the tektronics meter I'll stick that here kind of move this over and I'll put the other voltmeter alright guys so this is the entire setup we've got the this meter reading the plus rail on this side and this meter the tektronics reading the the minus rail I'm using these meters because they have DC and AC readings on the on the display so um, that way I can look at the ripple and the DC voltage reading at the same time so there's our input section I've got the thermistor right here I'll kind of push this stuff away and kind of let it sit over here on its own okay got the switch right over I got the switch over here on the corner just sitting off here on the table and got the uh, the differential meter right here you can see the the LEDs on I think and it's on times 20 setting so those probes are these big guys here they're tight we're gonna look at the um, the negative side of that and we're gonna with the rector scope probe here we're gonna be looking um, on the plus side and then we got the hand tech for the current if we want to look at that okay I think we have it instrumented and let's go up and look at test equipment and see how that's set up all right and I think with this view of the equipment you'll be able to see the power quality meter the active load and the scope screen and we'll probably zoom in on some of these at times all right so we'll set this mold up and let's set this to constant wattage so constant wattage so we'll go in that mode that way we can set the wattage and I think we'll start off with say like 50 watts so We'll go to set, and then right now it's set to 100 watts. Or here, one, two, three, four, five. Go over there and make that zero. All right, so now we're set. So um, it's showing the voltage is kind of flipped around. It's not reading anything. The current's nothing. Wattage is nothing. So I'm going to leave this on set mode so we can watch the power, and I'll choose that five. Uh, 50 watt setting there so I can adjust that I can adjust that this way when we uh, on the fly when we get power on and then I just hit the on button to turn on the power when I hit the on button we should see power and current and once I apply power to the circuit we'll have power readings okay let's set up the scope okay so for the scope channel one's a normal scope probe the times 10 I have it's a switchable but I have a times 10 setting so let's hit this let's go to DC coupling at first so we can see the voltage rise 1 meg uh, full bandwidth and it's times 10 so that's good uh, channel 2 is the differential probe well let's go back to DC on this one as well and full bandwidth inverts off just like the other one and we're on times 20 settings so up here I just rotate this round to choose times 20 to match differential pro so now we can turn off that menu turn off that one and right now we're set for half a volt let's change that to say 10 volts and we'll change this one to 10 volts as well we're expecting around 35 volts per side so um, right now this guy is set let's put them both down right about on this scale here 
And you can see right here it'll say 20 volts, minus 20 when I get there. It's, minus, it's uh, two divisions below the center, so it's saying minus 20 off the of center. Okay, so when I'm up here, I'm 20, 30, so we should see the voltage come up to about here. Okay, now the, the current probe, I, we may or may not use it, but let's just set it up. So times, so let's see, DC setting, uh, it's one meg input, and it's times 10. I have it on times 10 scale right now, and it's current, so I selected current, so we're good there too. All right, so in case we want it, and right now I've got measurements set up. I added measurements, went to these measurements and added them that way, and turn off those menus. So channel one, channel two, and channel three, they're all set for peak to peak and RMS. Okay, as far as the time base, we're set at 10 milliseconds per division. Yeah, that's a pretty good spot. We'll leave it there for now. And quite, we're at 10,000 points of choir. And so, okay, we're at 10K, so we'll leave that there. Okay, so I hit the run stop. It was turned off, so I turned that on. So our, our the purple one, channel three here, is off screen. I'm gonna hit the degauss. So that's degauss, and that's 100 milliamps. Let's, let's actually go to half an amp. Okay, so uh, I think we're all set up here. Oh, acquire. I checked that before, we're 10K. I think I'm gonna just go 10 million points, go the, to the highest setting there. Okay, I thought I'd show you one shot of the LEDs glowing and the meters reading. This is like, there's no power, so the AC settings on these uh, meters are showing zero ripple and 38.4 volts, 38.4 volts on the rails. So I'm gonna turn off the switch. Okay, it's been about a minute and you can see the voltage just slowly draining away those 10K resistors. There's two of them per capacitor bank and they're just slowly discharging those cap banks. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the active load and you'll see it just draining down to zero. Did you see them? They just drain right down. So all zeros now. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the active load. I'm gonna turn on power now. I'm going to turn on the 50 watt load. Okay, the 50 watt load's on. I just wanted to show you how these meters will show some ripple current going on. It's kind of bouncing on and off. Okay, guys, so I've got this at 50 watts. You'll see current uh, and the voltage come on when I flip the switch. Here we go. Okay, so that's 77 volts, 0.3. That's across the you know, both rails. Okay, so no current right now. Um, let's go ahead and uh, turn on the load. Okay, now you, you saw the voltage drop down. Watch, if you're, you'll see it drop down as it gets loaded. Okay, all right, so the ripple, uh, peak to peak, maybe 1.2 volts, 34.5, 34.5, about 1.6. It's kind of fluctuating a little bit. Let's zoom in on the ripple, okay? So what we want to do is go channel one, AC couple that, and then we'll bring it up to the center screen. I'll just push the button in, and let's see, we'll get the amplitude, kind of zoom in on the amplitude a little bit there, there. We'll zoom in to it like that, okay? Channel two, same thing, AC, and push the button, center it, and get the amplitude up. Oh, by the way, I hit the invert on, on channel two because I put the probe, the differential probe, uh, looking at the the plus to the minus rail, so it's negative. Okay, so we'll just uh, capture, capture that and turn off the power for now. Let things cool off a little bit. Okay, so that's just, you know, minimum load. Let's turn off that menu. We got about, um, 392 millivolts peak to peak. And channel two is about 104 millivolts. Oh, that's RMS, sorry. Okay, so we have about 392 millivolts peak to peak, channel one, and about 424 on channel two, and RMS is about 103 and 104. So, yeah, they're, they're varying a little bit as they move around. 
So that's that's charging up and discharging. So by the way, when we do our equations, our math, we're you know 8.3 milliseconds for 60 hertz is half a wave, but part of that wave shape is charging and only part of it's discharging. So when we do that math equation, we're doing this linear equation here. So really, it's that time. So it's kind of a worst case when we do the full use the full uh, time for the equation. Just kind of a point I wanted to make for the math. So now as we increase the power, we're going to see ripple increase. So I'll probably drop the scale. Right now we're at 100 millivolts per division. I'll probably drop the scale down a little bit. And, and we'll see the power go up here. This is the output power. This is what we're setting it at. And then when I go here, it'll show what we're measuring. So that's what we're setting and that's what we're measuring. Okay, so I propped the power meter up here so we might be able to look at that. So as I increase the load, we'll see the ripple change here. I'll probably change um, to a smaller scale here. And maybe I'll just offset these a little bit just so you can watch that they're actually different. <laughs> so anyway, and then I'll, I'll hit the light meter there. We'll point out the power here, power factor. So what we want to do is we want to get 250 VA at the input and see how many watts we get here. So that's the max power. And then we'll see how much ripple we get at all those settings. And that'll tell us how much maximum power we can get at our amplifier without uh, clipping, okay? So let's do that. Let's see, for the first setting here, 50 watts, you can feed 56.8 watts going in. So we're losing about 6.6 .6 watts in, in efficiency, or efficiency. <laughs> So that's the efficiency, 56.4 versus 50 watts on the output. And we're got 6.28 amps going in, 60 hertz. And power factor is 0.718 and 123 volts. Okay, and we have uh, ripple, we have 400 millivolts peak to peak and 424. So pretty close from channel one to channel two. And RMS is uh, 99 millivolts and 50 millivolts of ripple and 72.9 volts from rail to rail. On my meters, I have 36.49 um, on each one. I, it fluctuates a little bit, but about 36.49 volts. We have about 0.6 amps now. If we have 122 volts of the input, we need about two amps to get 250 VA. And that's if the, you know, we'll switch over and make sure we got our power. So let's go ahead and crank up the power go to 150 okay you see 1.8 we're almost there okay we're all right 180 watts whoops I had the run stop button on okay scopes capturing I'm gonna freeze that we have 2.16 amps 60 Hertz 0.778 power factor so it's a little bit better at higher power and 122.1 volts and at 205 watts it says so we know we have some efficiency loss so that's why we looked at the current okay 2.16 amps all right so the the electronic load is showing 67.3 volts it's dropped a little bit and 2.6 amps at the load 2.7 almost and almost 180 watts and over here on the scope we have 632 millivolts peak to peak that is pretty darn good and 656 over here and 191 190 is rms for ripple voltage that's pretty darn good let me turn that off it's probably getting hot <laughs> okay and just to go over the schematic um it looks pretty messy with all these diodes that's which we saw in the data sheet each one of those packages has two diodes so I kind of outlined them with this dashed line showing the common cathode, okay, and the two anode pins coming into each one. So, so if you imagine that just being one dial, it looks a lot simpler. So, when the AC comes in to these two points here, when it's plus here, minus here, plus goes to these two diodes out this way through the load and back this way, and then it sees these two diodes and goes out the minus. So there's your loop when it's plus and minus. 
when it flips over it's minus plus then the plus down here goes up here through this guy and loops back around and finds this minus and goes up there and out so there's your loop there and I cross out the 120 we get 120 volts actually here in the US but uh, the transformers it used to be seem like 115 volts now I think they're standardized in 120 but at 115 uh, the transformer is rated at 25 out so that's why when we put 120 in we get a little bit higher voltage out RMS and then I'm showing a 10k resistor there's actually two of them kind of crossed out there I had 4.7 over here but uh, so it's 10k times 2 and that's the bleed off resistors for these big caps and the big caps there's four of them four 10 mic 10,000 microfarads same thing on this side and we have these 0.1 poly caps on the output by the connector and then the LEDs um, had a 4.7 K resistor in series to limit the current so alright so there you go so that's uh, it's probably why they're so bright because you know 4.7 K with 30 something volts on that's uh, putting some you know what 8 milliamps or so through this so that's pretty bright okay so that's the schematic okay so now for a little math if we're the transformer is rated 25 volts out with 115 in then the turns ratio gives us this ratio where we can say we really have 120 volts and we want to know what the x with the actual voltage is out so we solve for x meaning we multiply both sides by 120 giving us this which gives us 26 volts rms now to find the peak of that is 36.77 volts peak now if we had a big cap bank say we only got 770 millivolts peak to peak ripple so we subtract that 77 from there then we'd end up with 36 volts DC so if we can maintain 36 volts DC then the voltage on the output could go up as high as 36 volts before it clipped but then hold on let's take line tolerance the the power coming in is 10 percent so let's subtract that so we end up with 32.4 volts okay so our voltage can swing up to 32.4 volts before it flattens out so if we use that as our max voltage in this power equation v squared over r so 32.4 over 8 ohms we get 131.22 watts well that's great now the transformer is rated 250 VA we're going to do this on each channel so double that's 260 so we're over the VA rating of the transformer and we haven't taken power factor in consideration so we're the transformer is going to be the limiting factor not the not the voltage here the rails okay so now what this might mean though is for transient power where the transformer will allow higher power for uh, periods of time then we can get some transient power out so we the cat the capacitor bank having this uh, low ripple voltage will provide us the voltage and with this with relying on the transformer being over designed uh, we'll have some nice transient some nice dynamic power okay but that's what our capability is from our capacitors and our voltage all right guys hope you liked that hope that was informative so what the results here were were 205 watts we were able to get on the output because the power factor was a little better than i th you know thought it was going to be is 0.776 so almost 0.78 uh that's pretty good so and the power the voltage across the rails from rail to rail was 67.7 so that was pretty good too that's darn near 34 volts a rail so that was a little better than expected um, looked pretty darn good so as far as voltage ripple it is less than a volt for sure is is around 632 656 milli uh, volts peak to peak that's pretty darn good less than three quarters of a volt so um, with big cap bank you can see that that's not a problem uh, ripples not a problem and this transformer power factor so on it looks like it's a little bit better than 
uh, what I might have thought in the beginning and it looks like we're able to get a little over 200 watts out of this uh, this transformer so that's good and as far as dynamic power in the last video you saw we took it up over 300 watts so you know we've got room uh, for dynamic power too so that's looking pretty good all right so that's we're going to go into another video uh, where we're going to kind of where i'll go over each element of the power supply and try to just abbreviate uh, the importance of each aspect and um, and how to choose the diodes and you know how to choose the capacitor kind of how to optimize parts so we'll kind of go through an optimization video um, maybe in the next video since we've gotten this far maybe this is a good time to do that so uh, I think if you're gonna go with just capacitor no regulation I think we're kind of there at this point all right guys thanks for watching to the end here um, I've got to announce something here I um, in video one of this power supply series um, so I asked a question about the power cord this power cord why can we get away with two wires and why should we maybe use three wires what's the difference and I was going to give away a meter to um, to someone who answered that question and I I didn't did not get the turnout on on that that I thought I might so it was actually kind of a little bit easier I didn't have to put so many names in the hat <laughs> so essentially that's what I did um, and I ended up pulling out a name and so oh and by the way I gotta apologize a little bit because I, I meant to do this um, earlier but I waited I, I decided I wanted to throw in some some new leads with this thing too so I'm gonna send these leads with this guy so anyway um, the fried mule is the name that came up so congratulations fried mule thanks for uh, responding and thanks to everybody else and by the way the other guys that responded to that I'm gonna put their name in the hat the next time I give away meter I think I've got three of these things I think I'm gonna give away another one on another video maybe after that optimization one yeah maybe I'll do another hey why not so all right so the guys that didn't win thanks for answering there's great answers you guys that haven't read those you got to go back and look at their answers they're really good answers uh, so what I'll do though is I'll put their names in for the next giveaway and so their names will end up if they want to put their names in again for the second giveaway just they'll just have to say so and then their names go in twice so that'll show me that they watched the next video that I decided to give a meter away and it kind of I think it's kind of fair since they you know they didn't win this time they get a little better chance to win next time for you know playing playing along so you know of course these are used meters right oh and by the way so fried mule <clears throat> I don't know if you can contact me through my front page or not I don't know if that shows an email address uh, it's kissanalog at gmail.com so anybody wants to email me you can email me there I had somebody contact me through Facebook so I guess I guess my email probably does not come up so they tracked me down <laughs> and that's okay I answered some questions for them uh, hopefully that's helpful but uh, I'd, I'd rather answer them on the on the face here I guess I need to start my blog on my web page huh uh, I've been busy doing videos haven't got my web page together so I have to start a blog on that but all right hey thanks for watching this kind of got along uh, congratulations and thanks for watching again all right, hey, give me a thumbs up if you like this.